Okay, can everybody hear me? I, I don't think there's anything to, to day trade here today, people. So you can watch your options if you're in them today. And <clears throat> is anyone gonna do this if it sets up? <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if it will. HLF is the only thing I rated today and it doesn't rate good. It, it could do something into the open that would make me say that we could do it or that you could do it. I'm not doing it because it, it doesn't rate well, but actually this looks worse here, <laughs> even in the last five minutes. Yeah, Journey Woman, I think it's a good plan of action. Actually, I do have a topic to talk about today um, if we don't do anything and if I don't even call anything. Is there anything else last minute here anybody else wants me to watch or look at? Long or short? There really is bupkis today. I mean, absolutely nothing to trade in either direction. And the market's probably higher. So, you know, can't go shorting everything in the world. eBay could set up late, not early as a long. You want a short M? I don't think it was gapping, but I'll look at it. No volume. M could continue lower, but this isn't a gap. Same thing as somebody brought up about the Lulu. This could continue lower too, but it's not really gapping. So what are you playing there? What's the strategy? All right, I have, I have the HLF up. It's got volume. If it sets up and somebody wants to do it, I'll call it, but it hasn't yet and it might not. It's the only thing I rated. It doesn't rate well, so I'm choosing to step aside, but I know some of you like to trade. Here, let's look at the market. Wow, market is gonna make an attempt to hold today and make another high. This is crazy. 143.49. Let's just watch this little guy here. Actually, that doesn't even look like that was the open. This is gonna have probably some big spike up and be the open. Let's watch it. And there it is. <laughs> RH didn't even break yet. Happened a pair ago. This did break. This was the secondary watch I had. This would not have rated well either. This is dropping. This is a secondary watch I had. Again, wouldn't have rated well, wouldn't have done it. But this is actually breaking. I'll go back to that. This says volume. It's going. It was a secondary watch today. This would not have rated well and I wouldn't have done it. But this is breaking. Nothing else is. Nothing else in the world is. Look, this isn't. Even this isn't yet from last week. Okay, PRGO, I'm just gonna watch here. Oh, what happened with eBay? Nothing. Okay, this is rolling over. If I call this PRGO, and again, I wouldn't have aggressively done this because it wouldn't have rated well, but we're watching it here, it's broken. If this sets up, it, would anyone do it if I call it? I'm just saying, because if not, I'll give a lecture today and, and talk about the couple options that people are in and just give a little lecture. I'm not day trading today. There wasn't anything that met my criteria. If someone will do this, I'll watch it. I don't see anything else to call. 
I don't see any longs setting up actually. So let's go over, let's go over something here. I guess no one's gonna do this even if it sets up because no one's writing. Let's go over um, in general, we're looking to do what? We're looking to do new gaps, okay? So Lulu was a gap up that happened last week. I said in the morning, pre-market, this isn't gonna, this isn't a good long, it's probably gonna fall today. And that's exactly what it did. So, you know, this is just kind of open neutral today and, and it's trying to fall, but not really falling hard. The overall picture of this chart though looks lower. So the right way to be in this is a short, but this isn't really a new gap. And you can't play this as a continuation gap because it gapped up and it just failed. So what's the strategy you're shorting? You're just trend trading this if you're doing it. Same thing here with M. M looks lower. This was a beautiful, beautiful trade that you know we did almost a month ago now. It's hard to believe, but May 11th was a month ago. This chart looks lower too, but what are you what are you doing here? What are you trading? You're just trend trading this if you're in it. So I don't really think that this is anything to call because can't be can't tell you this is going to go to a certain target today. It's going to break today. It's going to do anything. You know, again, I didn't call an option trade in this. It'd probably be better as a swing trade where you're watching something lower and you're in it. When I call the gaps, when we do the gaps like RH, I, I'm predicting then knowing that it's going to make that directional bias move and also have momentum that day. Is M lower? Yes. Would you want to day trade it? No, because it may not even move hardly at all, even if you short it, even though that's the right way to be in it. Because you, you and that's you got to get movement in something to get paid. And, and I just, this may not move at all. It's kind of like IBM. IBM hasn't really been moving yet. I do think this breaks. It hasn't yet. But there are better options trades or swing trades than day trades. We day trade a gap, but we want to have movement in it the day that we do it. Here, here's HLF. Wow, this is trying to hold. Is anybody going to do this if I call it? Looks like this just broke really hard right in here. A little late, it's trying to break the low. No one's writing anything, so I'm guessing that no one else is, no one's going to trade today like me. Is that the gist of it? This is set, this just set up, but it broke too fast and I didn't see it, and I'm not sure if I would have called it aggressively there. But PRGO and HLF are two watches. Beast Trader says no, not doing it. It's a good decision. Abby Lab wants to try it. HLF or anything. Here, PRGO, PRGO set up. I, I'm not watching these good enough. I'm not watching these good enough. This is already set up too. You would have had to do this on your own Abby Lab. I'm just talking and no one's answering me, so I'm just flipping through charts and talking and this did set up and I missed it. I didn't call it. You would have had to do it on your own. This is too late. I was watching this and then no one was talking back to me, so I just started talking about different charts. But this did set up, it's going. I actually just dropped a dollar. These things might set up again. I don't know. But these were this was the morning move in this. So I would not have called this or done it. I wouldn't have done anything in this. It didn't rate well. Or it wouldn't have. But anyways, this you could have shorted. I would have called it if I'd been watching it, but I didn't because no one was answering back that wanted to trade. And let's just talk about then what I was going to talk about anyways. I think the best idea is to follow the system. You know, nothing rated well today. I have a good eye, so sometimes I can see in the live day when somebody's going to go, which is why I'm flipped back and forth between these two stocks. But, you know, overall, you're supposed to follow the system supposed to follow the system and when the gap rate's good you do and then when it doesn't you don't. The idea of seeing something in the pre-market is what gives me the conviction and it should give you the conviction too and if I don't see it in the pre-market which would be in the gap rating to qualify then I don't feel like risking my money in the trade and that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Now on the days when I call two things or three things okay if we have two or three watches and I opt to do one I don't think there's anything wrong if you want to do two trades that day if I call two things and I rated both of them and they both rate well that's different deciding to trade on days when nothing rates well and I'm not trading two I don't think is a good idea but I know some of you like to do it 
And this, this did go. This would have been very hard to even call. But this here did set up and did just drop a dollar. But that might be it. Let's go look at the market. Anyway, so between, between now and when the next earnings season starts, you can take the time if we're slow certain days or in the afternoons, if, you're, if you don't go to work, if you're a full-time trader, or if you're home, uh, then you can you can figure out what your plan of action is for basically third quarter. So part of June, July, and into August is third quarter, and you can think of what is your plan of action for that. You can think what your plan of action is for day trading and options if you do both, or if you just day trade, then just for those. I don't think there's anyone in here that's just doing options. What is your what is that? It's you know how much money are you risking and where are you getting out of the trades? And you want to make sure that you have a good quarter, you know, a good period. So we started off the month of June slow last week, but then there was stuff to look at Thursday, Friday. Typically, Mondays are the slowest days. And even though I thought about closing the room on Mondays, you know, if I change my schedule, once I start this project full on, I don't know. I mean, you know, I thought about it and I'm like, maybe I close the room Fridays because Fridays, I think some of you could trade on your own. Mondays is the hardest day. If there's anything to do, it would be, I would see it on a Monday and you might not, or I tell you to stay away. It's important to have a good fresh start, a good start to the week, which is Monday. Fridays, I think a lot of times there is stuff and you can trade on your own without me. Mondays are hard usually. Google is moving up. Let's take a look at it. All right, we'll go over the options. So Google, Google is working. So right in the room, if you did this, I called this last week. It was a very aggressive call. Actually, I did talk about it in the room on Friday. I said, this is going to go right to 1,000. It's not going to go back. It's going to just go there. It's going to collect $100. <laughs> Shower Singer's in it, Galahad's in it, Dubod's is in it, and it's gonna go to 1,000. So this was a really very nice call and an aggressive call. Trader Lexi, you're actually in it. Green Mavericks in it too, very good. Um, no, if you did this and you're in it, you're in it. If you did this and got out on Friday, no, I would not get back in it. This is the this is same thing for day trading or same thing for options. If you do the trade and it sets back up, you can retake it. Here, let's go to the to this and this is this is not an amazing example here because I would not have done this and I didn't do it and I this gap went really well but the setup was here there was a setup here and then it's set up again here so if you short this here and you're in it fine here it's set up again you only take a trade when it sets up so this isn't there's no setup in here to do in this today the stock is red in the morning, holding support, but red, gap down. There's no setup in here today. So if this had gapped up today and looked good higher to gap up following through, you could do it. If you were still in half, I'd say fine, let it ride out or you could out of the position and go back full. But if you took the whole trade off into Friday because you were up, I would not completely do a brand new trade here because there's nothing to do for a brand new trade. Does that make sense? This actually you could have done today as a brand new trade if you'd gotten out of it, but I don't think anybody did. No one got out of it last week. You're in it now. But this is a, what a great, this is just such a typical Melissa call here to call this. It's gonna go right there. And it's doing it without the market. Um, anyway, so money management. Galahad was emailing me the last couple of days about money management. It made me think of something for the, for, for the room in general. You know, I, I thought about doing a trading plan class. I started writing one that I never finished it. Maybe I'll actually finish it. But I, it's money management is completely different than how you read the chart. If you're looking at me, you're saying, how the heck did she see that thing or whatever? Or I, my interpretation of the chart wasn't exactly what she said or whatever. That's a process of learning. And obviously you take the class, you rate the gaps, you learn how to read charts better, and it's a process for you, or you pick it all up right away and just do it. But none of you are gonna know how to read charts as well as me because you know I've been doing this for eight years and nothing else. But the point is, it doesn't matter. You have a money management structure that helps you. 
So you don't have to interpret every single solitary chart exactly like the way that I do. If I see something that you, that you don't understand, like this, for example, that this would go and you could buy this where I called it, you have money management. The money management, there's no interpretation. And that is your problem, Galahad. You're, you're looking at the chart and deciding, this looks good, so I'm gonna hold it. This doesn't look good, so I'm not gonna hold it, or whatever. Or this looks great, I'm gonna add and take more risk. You're all over the place. You have to have a money management plan, and that does not, is not up to interpretation. And that you're not changing. That you're not changing no matter how great the chart is, or no matter how stinky the chart is, in your mind, because you're probably not reading the chart exactly right because you're in the process of learning how to do it better this is going to go right to that number wow and this is way over 1000 haven't looked at this since friday geez louise let's look at amazon i knew once you touched on that number a thousand it would just keep going though but it you know i didn't want to call anything else in this after that one trade was done <clears throat> let's look at this here it got to anyways money management okay is not up to interpretation you don't look at the chart and say this chart looks great I'm not gonna get out of half even though I'm down I'm looking at this chart it looks not so good I'm gonna kill it even though I'm not down half which is my rule you don't do that that's how you end up changing what you're doing all the time and you don't look at something and say this looks so great I'm gonna add to it and take more and double my risk all of a sudden. That's how your that's how your results get all over the place like crazy. And the same thing with day trading. If you have a money management plan and you're saying, here, I'm gonna call this if it sets up if somebody wants it. It's gonna be a big stop. If you want to do 99 by 50, oh, I there, there it goes. 99 by 50. By the time I spit the words out, it just broke. It's too late. Wow, look at that. I was trying to figure out the stop. It just fell off a planet. 99 by 50. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, it fell 30 cents. Holy guacamoles. Uh, forget it. Just don't do anything today. This is what I did. <laughs> Anyways, it's not up to interpretation. The market's going to make a new high. That's not up to interpretation whether or not the gap rates well. It either rates well or it doesn't. If it doesn't, you don't do it. If it does, then you do it. You have a set risk. Where are you getting out? Target, first move, time of the day, what? You need to know. And it can't, it can't, it, you know, it, you can't be changing it every two seconds. Holy guacamole, the market really is gonna make a new high and hold in this gap down today. Jeez, to do, to do, to do. So let's look at the banks here to see if that's what's holding the spy back. I don't know what's holding the spy back, but the cues look like they're taking off. That's gonna help Google. Um, so you don't interpret your money management. You have a plan of action. And I think the best thing for some of you is to set it in stone and feel like it's gonna be your plan of action for the rest of your life because you wanna change things too often, too much. I say, you know, change it every quarter. If you're doing well, you can, or if you're not doing well, you can step it back. But I think that screws up some of you in your head too. So just say, you know what? This is my trading plan for the rest of my life. This is the amount of money I'm risking in every trade for the rest of my life. If that helps some of you stick to it, then do it because some of you are not sticking to it. Your money management is not up to interpretation, the charts are. And if you're not sure, you can ask me. And if you're here in the room, you know what to do because I'm telling you, yay or nay. And if you're in an option and you don't know if you should hold on to it or not or what to do, then ask me what I think of it. Any questions from anyone about anything? Is anyone there? Am I talking to myself? <laughs> so this HLF had, you know, just fell and broke. I tried to call it for you guys, sorry. This one had this one move, which I didn't call. That looks like it was, it was done. This did broke here, but the time I spit out the numbers, it just fell hard. Rumi says hello. Yes, hello to you as well. 
Okay, good. I want you people up in this Google. Oh, what did I possibly call? What day did I call that? It's gonna, I'm going to go back in the thing. I just... I, I think it was... Was it Wednesday or Thursday? Five thirty-one. You have 10 contracts of Google and you're up $1,700. Suzanne is in it, yeah, 531. So right with the price you have, some of you, I mean, I called it in the morning, but some of you probably got a really good price if you waited a little bit in this in here because it dropped that day that I called it. Mm -hmm. You got it at two and a quarter and it's not 6.1. Yep, and there you have it. Now you're up 1,900, yep. Trader Lexi's up double what you paid. What are you gonna do? What's your plan of action, Trader Lexi? What, what do you need to know? You should know right now. You're in this trade, you're live. What are you gonna do? You're up double what you risk, or more, a lot of you are up three times. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You need to know. Shower Singer did it right away. Are you up now in it or not? You're up now, yeah. See, see this is what this is what this is what some of you do. You say, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this forever and ever and ever. I'm gonna hold it because it actually doesn't expire till Friday. And even if this runs up today and I'm up a million dollars, I'm gonna hold it because it's gonna keep going because the chart looks so great. That's exactly what Gala had said every day that he was here in the month of February. But the chart looks so good. It's gonna keep going. It looks so great. <laughs> Of course it looks good. It looks good right now. It looked good when I call it, or I wouldn't have called it for Pete's sakes. That, that, that doesn't mean you hold it. This is probably a good exit on this today in Google, meaning Monday. Not this second, not this moment, not this minute, but today. Or you can wait for the market. But this is the move. Sorry I called this so late, you guys. This did end up working here. Let's just see where it went. It went almost a dollar. Big stop I had to give it, though. I don't think anyone got it because I, I called the, when the numbers and then it fell. I would not do anything with this. I'm not going to call that again. What happened with RH? Nothing. 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 Well, it'd be interesting to see if we get it one more and IBM is gapped down. I think that's how it's going to play out now because it's taking so long and I'm surprised. It's probably going to gap down and we're going to end up day trading and those of you that are in the option are going to get paid that day. I don't know when this does whatever it's going to do. Galahad, okay, let's talk about this. Galahad just, oh, all right, here, I have some questions before we talk about Google. Looking for a good price to hit a thousand. Yeah. You we're going to stay in at least 985. What's my advice? You have to decide for yourself what you can do. Every time it hits the strike, are you out? Are you waiting for it to get out when it gets to the target? Are you going to time it with the market? What are you going to do? This is a good trade. It's going to go to a thousand. I can't tell you the exact time, second, tick. So what do you what do you want to do? Think it through. How much are you up? Do I still think IBM will hit 150 before June 16th? The answer is yes. I think it's going to end up gapping down one day and do it. It's not that far away. Look at this. 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 
So the answer is yes. Okay, Sid. Yeah, we're not, I don't I don't think it was a good idea to trade today, but if you're in these options, fine. If you're if you just want to listen, fine. I'll just talk in for a little bit here. Um, but yeah, I, the IBM looks great. Prisco wants to get out of this before 10 o'clock or by 10 o'clock or at 10 o'clock. That's fine too. That's okay as well. What I don't want to see some of you do is get out of these trades with small losses before they move or small gains and then they take off and changing your mind every other day. Trader Lexi just got out. She couldn't stand it. How much are you up? Get one contract, right? Very nice trade. Galad's saying it will turn tomorrow. Do you know what I honestly think? It won't. You want to, you know what I want to, you want me to honestly think, I honestly think I honestly think this Google continues for three days. That's what, you know, that's what I honestly am telling you. This is gonna rally, it rally Friday, rally today, it's gonna continue tomorrow. I, I'm not saying any of you should hold it. You wanna know what I honestly think? It's not gonna turn tomorrow, you're wrong. This thing that you have in your mind, making decisions based on time is so screwed up and is the reason that you're not doing as well as you could. This will not turn tomorrow. It is going to continue. It will run up today, and it will run up tomorrow, and it will continue tomorrow. You're wrong. So, you know, making decisions based on things like this many days of time or this many indicators and stuff like that, it doesn't work. You read the gap, and you read the price action in the gap, and you read what's happening here in Google. Google's getting bought. That's it. It's higher. It's moving up. It just made a brand new all-time highs. We're watching it here today. Okay. Galahad, you have to come up with a money management plan for yourself that you will stick to and live with. Everything I tell you to do, you don't listen to me. I say if you're down half in something, you get out. You don't. I, I, I don't know. You need to write down your own money management plan or have another mentoring session with me and I'll create one, but then you still have to follow it. If you're as good as reading charts as me, then you can make decisions on the fly to hold something or get out or whatever. But even that won't work every single time because sometimes I make mistakes. But, you know, a lot of times I can tell when the day is to exit something. You want to exit something the day the, the momentum comes in. This would be a good exit on this today. You couldn't fault yourself for getting out of this today. Do I think it continues tomorrow? The answer is yes. So, you know. You have to find a, some way that you can live with it. No one can predict time. You're trying to predict time. That's one of the reasons you're, you're not doing that well. You have to predict what the stock's going to do in the move and come up with a money management plan that you can live with to make money. That's your goal. Your goal is not to get out of the high of the day and the low of every day and every trade. And you're trying to predict that with time. Stop doing it. It's not working. It's not working for you. It doesn't work for anyone. It's impossible. Is this going to work? Yes. Could I predict the exact day it's going to go there? No. Is this working? Yes. Could I predict the exact day this would happen up here? No. No, I didn't. I called the trade last week. I didn't know if it was going to happen that day. It very well could have. It could have happened the next day. It could have happened last week. I saw that it would make a move higher between now, the last week, and this Friday, which is exactly what the stock's doing. But I can tell you the exact number it's going to go to and the exact day to get out of there and the exact high it's going to get before the expiration date. And if I could do that, I'd be a genius. And we'd never, ever, ever, ever lose. So you can't predict time. You take a chance when you hold trades, when you're up to bigger moves that they're going to not continue. And you, you, you take a chance, okay? It's the same thing with the day trades. Let's say that we had done this today. Let's say we had which we didn't because it didn't rate well. Let's just say we had done it. If you did this here and got out, that would have been a good trade. If you did it here and got out, that would have been a good trade. If you did it here and did not get out, you got stopped and you're up a good amount of money in here, almost a buck, and you got stopped and you got screwed. 
And I don't even know if this goes to anywhere I would have had as a target today. Why? Because the gap isn't good. It's not a good gap. And when you don't have a good gap, you can't have any expectation it's going to do anything right, including go to the target. So if you did this in here today, said I'm holding this to the target, you got stopped, you were up, and I don't even know if it gets to the target. But again, the gap didn't rate good. That's why we didn't do it. But I'm just giving you an example. Here, and here you're up. You're up money. If you hold the entire trade, you ch it's chance. Chance it may or may not go to the target. Gap didn't rate good today. Market's bullish. Lucky you got anything at all if you did it. You know, that's the kind of thing going on in my mind. You, you, that's the, the, the unpredictability of the market that is very frustrating for people is they, everybody wants exact answers, exact everything. I'm, forget it. Stop. You're not going to get that. This is as exact as we can get. And it's pretty darn good. Because guess what? You use my system, you can make money. What's more exact than that? What more can you ask for from life? Nothing. Okay. So, you know, to know exactly, 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 exactly everything, you don't. You got out of Google, made 135%. You made 760 bucks, thanks. You're welcome. Again, what's your money management rule here? Facebook, Shower Singer, hold on. I didn't know you were still in this. Shower Singer, if you're still in this, this made it over the high. I thought it would have a hard time doing it. It looks like it did it today. I. What are you up in this? Again, money management. Did you flip it around 100%? Did you flip it around 50%? If you flip this around 50%, I wouldn't have a problem with you getting out of this today. If you flipped it under 100%, definitely get out of this today. Does this look higher too, though? Yes, this does. But, you know, I think this was one quick play in here last week. It was one quickie. You're lucky this happened. I didn't call any trades in here. And I talked about this Friday. And Gala had killed the trade with a loss on Friday, even though he held it, because of what I said about the chart. I said, this is going to have a hard time getting over this. That's what I said. I can't predict that it will what time. I could predict that this was a good trade in here and the day it went. It did follow through. Count yourself lucky if you held it and you didn't get out in here because I didn't know this would do this this week. I didn't say the chart looked bad. I said it's going to have a hard time getting over it and I don't know when it does. It will eventually. That's what I said. It did it in three days. So it's count yourself lucky if you're still in it and you're up, get out. This is the one that you're looking for a big, big move in. And this is the one you're looking for a big move in if it drops. And this could have had a big move, didn't yet, but looks fine. And if you're still in this, that's okay too. If you're up 50%, I'd take your money and run, especially if you're in Google. If you're down 50% in this, depending on the price you got it, or if you add it or did, you know, all of you did so many different things. Some of you took it and killed it. Some of you took it and added. Some of you took it at different prices. Some of you got in, got out. I mean, this has been this trade's been going on for two weeks. Everybody's done something different here now. It's very interesting. Talking to people that are in positions here now is very interesting. This is what sometimes makes these things work then so well. If you're down half the money of the trade, if, that's, if your money management is that you get out of it, then you kill it. And if you want to get back into it again, you can get back into it again as another trade Take it when if it gaps. If your money management is you're gonna hold the whole trade till it works and you're not gonna get out of half of it, then you're holding the whole trade. The chart looks good. This is higher. I, the, the idea of trying to predict time, just forget it. I don't. I think that, that it's more critical with options as some of you get all screwy about it in your head about the options, but it does happen with the day trades when we do them and then, and then sometimes they keep going in the afternoon and then some of you are like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have got out in the morning and then, and then sometimes you, the next day you want a bigger move so then you hold it and it doesn't go. You can't change what you're doing with your money management every day with day trades either. You gotta have a set plan. Take the first move out in the drop. Take half out in the first drop. Hold it if you want to the whole target, every one, but you're going to get stopped on some trades you're up good money in. 
and you'll make more in the days that don't. It probably all evens out, at least with my system, because my system has a high win ratio. If you held every trade I do to the target, you probably will get stopped in some and make more money in others and a lot. So it probably evens out the same as if you take every trade with every setup and get out into the first move the whole thing. It probably ends up being the same. So you just have to decide what you can live with. I think it was the right decision not to trade today. I'm very happy that this worked out for all of the people that are in it. This was another really good call that I made. Stop trying to make you know your decisions about your trades upon interpretation. Mesh it with your personality and what you can stand. Because if you're up you know, 100% in this trade today, and if it does not continue tomorrow and it rests tomorrow and has a big move then Wednesday, and you will hate yourself and lose sleep tomorrow for not getting out and you're up $2,000, then the answer is easy. You get out today. And if it goes on, then you could have made 15 grand. Tough noogies, you know? Most people can't even make two grand in a trade. Just be happy that you're doing it and I'm making good calls. God, that's so loud. Does anyone have anything else they want to go over? Any questions? Anything else they want to go over? I would like everyone to do well. I'm giving you ample opportunity. Calling the good day, day trades, calling the options too, whatever one you want to focus on, you know, each day, each month, each week, I think it's good to have them both in your pocket to know what to do to, for ways to make money in the slow, the slow days, either way. But what I what I want to see some of you do is become more fixated on the on the on the process itself of s taking the trade and making money instead of becoming so fixated on you know trying to get out at the high of every trade or the low of every trade in these or just trying to get something on days when there isn't anything good because i think that can trip you up too and even you know even the idea of only doing one trade a day i don't i don't have any problem with that and if the one trade fails you're done you you know if the one trade fails, you're done. Tomorrow, we'll get another one. If you can't do it, you don't have it shortable, that's something that I can't help you with. I can refer you to a broker that has a lot of shorts. That's all you can do for that. Change brokers. You do need to be with a place that has short access. Oops. The spy did not get up yet, and I don't know if we do today yet, but this looks like it's gonna follow through here. You have the easiest job in the world, you people being here with me. Some of you get that and you're in a nice groove and you just do the trades and you make money and you're very relaxed and you're doing very well. Some of you are just new and trying to understand everything. Some of you are making the process very difficult for yourselves. And I, for the life of me, I don't know why. You're trying to figure out things that are impossible. You are, you know, not reaching your full potential. You can email me, Koala Bear. You need to have over 25,000. So, you know, you, you, you know, you have to find a way to make this easier for yourself. I just don't think, I don't think that it can be any easier than, than coming to, to trade here with me. I don't, I mean, there's so many places out there that day trade and talk about day trading and the rooms are very convoluted. They call too many trades. They do too many different strategies. They look at too many different things. They have a million moderators. You know, they're not focused. There's too much chit chat in the rooms. People don't talk with authority and conviction in trades they believe in or calls that they make. I make very strong calls like this one here with authority that seem ridiculous and they work so often. You know, I, I, I can't, it's, it's just, you know, be happy that you're here and make it easy for yourself. You just have to do the trades I call. And if I don't trade, then you don't trade. That's, that's all I can say.
All right, let's look what we have out tonight to get ourselves a little bit excited. I don't think it's a good idea to make a decision what you're doing in a trade in the live moment unless you've been trading and reading charts for a very long time like me. And even sometimes like that, I've, I've erred. So you, you really need to know when you're actually, you know, before you take the trade, where is your exit? Tonight is THL, Casey. Oh, tomorrow's Fran. Fran, CSIQ, Con. Here, let's, t tomorrow's watches are better. I will, Jenny Woman. Tomorrow's watches, Fran, this is in the morning, con. Let's just quick look at Fran. If we get two nice, solid gaps this week, three, I'd be very happy. Oh, Fran's going down today. Fran. Con is tomorrow. Oh, this is the one. All right, there's some things to look at. I don't know if it's all the volume. Looks like this was done. That was it for the HLF and the PRGO. They did have quick little moves in there. MIK is tonight. I tell you, and I'll just say this one last thing. If I had someone telling me what trades to do every day that I 100% believed in, then I would, I would just do them and I wouldn't even think about it. I never had that. <clears throat> now it takes, you gotta believe in the person. That's why you learn the class. You believe in the system. You believe in the person. You trust that they, have, they know what they're doing. They have a good skill. You've been with them for a while. You've been following them for a period of time. You've seen them call good trades. You know, all of these things help your confidence in the person. But if I had a person like me, when I started out, I would have been so much better off. I didn't have a person like that. I went around to lots of places and they all taught lots and lots of things and none of them worked consistently. And that signed up deciding to create my own thing. So, you know, if I had a person like me eight years ago, I would just do what I say. So stop making it so hard for yourself, some of you. You may never be able to read charts as well as me. That's okay. You've got me here now. Let the process just come to you. Make the money. I'm calling the trades. I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon, even though my schedule might change. I'm still here. I'm still with you. So just make your life easy. Just take the trades and make money. All right. I am going to go. Sam, I will see you back in here at 1130. And Journey Woman, I will check and find out what happened with you in the room. And I'll see you back in here tomorrow morning. I have no idea what we get. Okie doke. Have a good day. You're welcome. You're welcome.